history now has the most saves in history. There was no one you wanted to see less than two people. George Steinbrenner, Pit or Moran Rivera. If things were going bad, I mean, literally, he would be waiting for me. So I would go see him. He's, what the hell are you doing? Why are you swinging at that pitch? Are you blind? You're so stupid. Come on, let's go. We need to win. <laughs> Every time. He's someone that I respect so much. He's going in as a 100% Hall of Famer. And I, I think that has to do less with his performance on the mound and more with who this man is and how he made people around him feel. Well said by Alex, and you know, the story goes that Roy Halladay once asked Mariana Rivera how to throw his cutter, arguably the most dangerous pitch of all time. Right. Mo not only showed Halladay, he outlined his fingers in pen on a ball wow. to remind him this is how you do it. That ball is now in the Hall of Fame, as are the plaques of the men who mastered the pitch. Well said. More on the late great Halladay in just a second. Although, if there was a bit of levity to be had, it came from the first unanimous inductee, Mariano who spoke last and kept wondering about his place Sunday and on the mound with regard to Wade. First of all, I don't understand why I always have to be the last. <laughs> I, I keep saying that for the last 20 years and last 17 years of my career, I always say, why I have to be the last one? But uh, I guess being the last one was a special. The Lord gave me the best pitch in baseball. Sorry, guys. The cup fastball. I was playing catch with Ramiro Mendoza, and I thrown the ball the same way that I'm throwing it for since I was six years old. And now the ball is moving, and I was afraid. I don't know what to do. Matter of fact, when uh, we went to uh, Detroit, we were for 45 minutes, almost to an hour, to make the ball stop from moving. Thank God that the ball didn't stop. It's a privilege and honor to just be part of one organization. I did it with dignity, with honor and pride. I tried to carry the pinstripes the best that I could. I think I did it right with that. I think he did more than all right. We also had other legends become immortals, like Lucida, Edgar Martinez, Harold Baines, Lee Smith. Announced crowd of 55,000. That would be the second largest in the history of the National Baseball Hall of Fame induction ceremony, where 53 other former inductees joined this year's class. And the Moose simply had to ask himself this question. How did a kid from a small town in rural PA play enough wiffle ball to make it to the major leagues and pitch there for 18 years? I was never fortunate enough to win a Cy Young Award or be a World Series champion. I didn't win 300 games or strike out 3,000 batters. And while my opportunities for those achievements are in the past, today I get to become a member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Maybe I was saving up from all of those almost achievements for one last push, and this time I made it. This is a day I never could have, have ever imagined happening when I was growing up in Puerto Rico or when I was in minor leagues wondering when my chance will come. And honestly, there were times over the last 10 years I wasn't sure what's going to happen. So thank you once again to everyone along the way who made this dream come true. I am so grateful and proud. Thank you. And then there was Roy Halladay, not alive to see his crowning achievement. He died on November 7th, 2017, when a plane he was piloting crashed into the Gulf of Mexico. That meant it was up to his wife to alone care for their sons, Braden and Ryan. She was up to the task. As evidenced by her speech on behalf of her late husband Sunday, she's up to succeed at anything with the amount of courage she displayed at the podium. It's overwhelming, the amount of people here today. I can't believe you came this far. And I'm so grateful that you're here. A special thanks to all these men behind me who I can't look at because I'll cry again. I can't tell you how many hugs I've gotten. I know how honored Roy would be to be sitting here today with such accomplished men who have represented this game so well over the course of all of your careers. This is not my speech to give. I'm going to do the best I can to say the things I believe Roy 
might have said or would have wanted to say if he was here today. I think that Roy would want everyone to know that people are not perfect. We are all imperfect and flawed in one way or another. We all struggle, but with hard work, humility, and dedication, imperfect people can still have perfect moments. Roy was blessed in his life and in his career to have some perfect moments, but I believe that they were only possible because of the man he strived to be, the teammate that he was, and the people he was so blessed to be on the field with. I'm so humbled to say congratulations to this year's Hall of Fame inductees, to say thank you to all of you on Roy's behalf. Some powerful stuff, some real powerful stuff. Never too early to look ahead to next year's Hall of Fame class. Maybe Mariotto's old 4-4 will join him. Derek Jeter leads the way for 2020 candidates. Bobby Abreu, Jason Giambi, Cliff Lee. They'll join the holdover list. I'm sure you know these names and their reasons. Kurt Schilling, Roger Clemens, Barry Bob.